My name is Jean Payne and I'm Assistant Director of the Network Learning Group at the National College for School Leadership. I've been invited to meet with members of the Bedfordshire Learning Community which centres on Samuel Whitbread Community College to hear how they approach collaborative working. It's always interesting when looking at learning networks to get inside how they started, why they started and what sorts of things they were trying to achieve while working as a learning network. I'll be talking to some of the senior management team, including head teachers and principals who are playing a central leadership role, teachers who are developing and sharing best practice, pupils who are involved in new classroom initiatives to raise boys' achievement, and parents who are seeing some of the results of the network's activities. One of the biggest successes is the sort of trust and understanding that's developed between schools. It's about, I think, having an agreed agenda that we can all buy into. Yeah. It has a sustainable element to it right from the beginning um, because the support is there. We're also wanting parents to become our ambassadors, to talk to other parents, but this school journey is crucial. Here in Bedfordshire in 2003, a group of 22 schools at upper, middle and lower school level organised themselves into a pyramid network with the support of their local authority and identified a strong cross-phase focus. All networks are different, but successful ones often start with a compelling idea. They find a practical and effective way to work together, embark on a shared learning journey, and are aware of the need to look forward and plan for the future. There's no real blueprint for an effective network, but some networks succeed much better than others. And where they have a compelling idea that unites the head teachers, the teachers, the pupils and the parents, they have a much greater chance for success. The local education authority, along with a group called BSIP, the Bedfordshire School Improvement Partnership, organised an event in Bedford about 18 months ago when the 44 schools across mid-Bedfordshire were asked to join together for a meeting. And it was actually our local upper school here at Samuel Whitbread who actually said, well, we're very concerned about the gender difference in attainment with the GCSEs. We then asked the local education authority and BSIP to provide us with some collective data because schools at that point in time had data just for themselves. That provided a very interesting profile because it showed that right in fact from key stage one there was in fact an issue with boys attainment. We want to close that gender gap. We want girls to have choices and we want boys to have choices. I want to give you a minute to work with the person next to you to think about how the polar bear has adapted to live in its particular environment. I went to see how bridging the gender gap was being addressed in the upper school. Can you tell me a little bit about what's been going on in the classrooms today? Uh, one of the things that we've been hoping to show you is um, one of our tricks of raising boys' achievement. Just sitting in pairs, boy, girl, boy, girl. The seating that we've had in the room as well is evidence of that. Sitting in chevrons rather than um, round tables and groups. We're realising that um, the group work is often putting boys with their backs to the school, so uh, backs to the front of the class. We've also realised that boys and girls work in different ways, so in this way they're actually stretching each other. It isn't something only for us to address. We want um, to inherit the good practice from the, you know, the lower schools, from the middle schools, into our senior schools. So um, really the aim is that everybody is on message. It isn't just, we're not competing with each other, we're collaborating. The big issue for us is what we call the learning journey. We want to take the message out to parents in our community that every single day counts. That every day at school is crucial, regardless of whether it's at 5, 15 or whatever, all the way through, that it's this smooth journey. So together, in a collaborative way, all the schools that are in on our learning community, we decided that we would actually put this programme together. And we've created a leaflet. Uh, we're now going into lower schools, all of us, upper school, middle and lower school heads, going in as a cluster into lower schools to take the message that actually the gender gap in Bedfordshire is too wide and that we need parents to support us on this. The issue of boys' attainment is also being addressed in the middle schools. 
through their Learning Conversations programme. What use do you actually see in the exercise we did yesterday in your classrooms on an everyday basis? To see how a teacher feels about like, people talking over others. Can you tell me a little bit about the um, Learning Conversation initiative the boys have been involved in? The initiative was set up as a DFES funded project um, for boys who feel, we feel need, we need to encourage them to learn more. So we looked at this set of boys and the idea is that through conversation with children rather than teaching them, you can then develop skills along the lines of thinking, along the lines of learning, so that they become more aware of what kind of learners they are and then can take more control of how they learn and what they learn in the classroom. How did you actually deal with the fact that nobody seemed to be listening to you? We just tried to shout loud and they were talking. Is that something that you find happens in a classroom if you can't get over what you want to actually say? Do you find yourself talking over people and shouting sometimes? Um, yeah. Yeah, OK, thank you. Thank you for being so honest as well. How did you feel about the exercise as it was going on and you realised it was going on? It's a bit random. Uh-huh. I, I don't think that would have anything to do with it. When he comes home, I say, how's it going today? Oh, great. And sometimes he doesn't say a lot. But like on last week, my other son had his visit to Henlow Middle School, the first day, and Josh spent the evening talking with David, the things he's learnt in learning conversation, how to cope with middle school himself. It was, it was a wonderful thing to watch. The two, the two of them just chatting about, Josh was saying about you need to have positive thoughts and bring thoughts with you. If you've got a lesson you don't like, then think of things you do like and that'll help you. So it was really, really positive. It was fantastic. It really was fantastic. Yeah, a lot less trouble now. I'm in learning conversation because when when learning conversation didn't exist, I was like detention every day and everything. But now it's really helped me, and I've came a long way because I can now interact with my class and my teachers getting happier with me. So I'm quite glad with that and proud. We kind of stereotyped him as like person who messes around, <laughs> but um, like but. But actually, when he did have something good to say, we, uh, we didn't listen to him because we thought that he was just going to mess around. A man that has behaved in lessons, not just muck around and do no work, actually, see, um, actually um, understand how the teacher sees the classroom, not how I see it. I get the impression from the course, actually, that um, it tries to get the children to understand that if they're a little bit different, that's OK. It's yeah. fine to be that way, and Alex seems to have excel through that really and he is, felt particularly under stress sometimes of being called a boffin or a boffin but um, being caught working hard mm -hmm. and now he's decided to buckle down mm -hmm. simply because of it I think anyway that's mm -hmm. where it's come from. It made me more mature in my class not um, a little not acting like a little lower school kid that um, I'm just gonna muck around and do no work I'm actually gonna try and get some work in done and just have a good time so with bread. I believe that the girls' results are much better than the boys, and I think that and this, this course has highlighted the reasons, possibly, in some respects. My only concern is that Alex has enjoyed it so much, a bit where he goes down to the next school and it goes bump and it stops. It's just sort of, you know, the momentum's there. I don't know whether it worked well or not, but that's what I tried to do. We've been able to bring those pupils back into our middle school to be able to work with other pupils, which has a fantastic knock-on effect in the sense of we're looking at motivation. You know, so we have a group of boys at the moment that are working with some upper school boys and they're able to work together to be able to look at what life means for them, not just about that particular period of their life in middle school, so they are able to see the progression. We took a long time trying to analyse how it's best to make sure that we work um, effectively together. And we, the, the buzzword for us is collaboration. It's really important that we see that we are working together, not as autonomous units or in competitive ways at all. There have been problems, there's no doubt uh, about that. And not all the head teachers have necessarily been fully on board with the collaborative approach. Um, because it, it is a change in our culture and a way of working as schools and rather than competing against each other and so for some head teachers there is a change of, of thinking and approach that's needed. Working together, collaborating and taking uh, a wider, more proactive view is actually more important than the day-to-day -day pressures. We all believe that 
but doing it is, is a different thing. We've tried to deal with that issue by simply being very positive and proactive and continually inviting people to be part of our team approach. One of the ways that we can measure how successful our network is um, the, is by the extent to which all the schools within this area actually buy into the network in terms of their, their vision and belief and their activity. But there is a wonderful feeling of team spirit now across the schools, which was not there two years ago. The network also received support from the local authority and the Bedfordshire School Improvement Partnership. Within our project on boys' achievement, we've received £12,000 in funding, which has enabled us to, to start progressing on our developments. It was important to have that money because one of the most successful things we did was to have a joint training day but that was really really important because we had 400 staff in a room together training together where the age of the students they were training became an irrelevance. It is quite exciting to think that we are working together um, for one particular issue at the moment which is the boys achievement because we do think there's a lot of work that needs to be done and one school on their own can't, can't manage to do that. Networking also provides new opportunities for staff to develop their skills in a fresh environment. We have joint continued professional development so that teachers are learning together. That learning conversation between teachers is continuous and it doesn't matter which phase you come from. You are an important person in your environment and you're working with others within your community. We've had training sessions, we've linked pupils with other teachers and they've been able to share some of the work that they've been doing with, with middle school colleagues and with people from other organisations that have come in to have a look at what this is about. They've been able to realise through the contributions that they've been making just how valuable their contribution is. Looking forward and planning for the future are critical features of network development. So what kind of things will keep this network going in the longer term? We've actually got a very exciting development now moving forward to deal with CPD because we're going to be in the autumn term carrying out a needs analysis of every member of staff in every one of our schools and then focusing on that, putting together our training package as a learning community. One thing that is starting to happen now is that um, other colleagues and indeed governors as well are starting to get involved and I'm, I'm sure that in the next two or three years that will be an area where there will be a lot of developments. We are starting to, to, to carry the message through into, into the staff rooms as well as, as, as just the heads and I think that's probably the next challenge for us really. Another real benefit is the sort of um, continuity and progression across the whole learning community and I think the schools ultimately will perhaps two or three years time will be able to actually specifically say these are, are the qualities that you will see in all our schools across the learning community. I've seen some encouraging things today in this network. They have a compelling reason to work together. It's relevant to all the schools, it's cross phase, it involves parents and is relevant to the whole community. They're also constantly working to build trust and being open. And probably most importantly, they're tackling high order challenges. They're using and studying data together, they're involving pupils in their activities, and they're planning CPD strategically. This would give me the impression that they're likely to continue long term.